July 2024. A fighter jet lands in Oregon that wasn't supposed to exist. The Air Force had sworn off non-stealth fighters. The future was invisible. The future was fifth generation. Yet here it was, the F-15 EX Eagle II, carrying 12 missiles, flying Mach 2.5, hauling 29,500 pounds of weapons, more firepower than any fighter in American skies. The decision shocked defense experts worldwide. Why would America resurrect a 50-year-old design when stealth ruled the battlefield? The answer reveals a strategic masterstroke that's rewriting the rules of air combat. And it's already changing how America will fight the next war. Because what happened next in the skies over the Pacific proved every critic wrong. But to understand why the Pentagon made this controversial billion dollar bet, we need to go back to the crisis that almost broke the Air Force, the fighter fleet crisis. By 2018, Air Force generals faced a terrifying reality. Their F-15C Eagles were literally falling apart. These weren't just old jets, they were flying death traps. Structural cracks appeared in airframes designed for 8,000 flight hours, but pushed past 12,000. Metal fatigue threatened catastrophic failures. Pilots were taking off in fighters that could break apart mid-flight. The math was brutal. The Air Force needed 386 squadrons to meet global threats. They had enough jets for barely 312. China was building hundreds of advanced fighters. Russia was modernizing, and America's aerial backbone was crumbling. The original plan seemed perfect. Buy F-22 Raptors and F-35 Lightning IIs. Both stealth, both fifth generation, both unstoppable. Except for one massive problem. The F-22 production line had shut down in 2011 after just 187 planes instead of the planned 750, and the F-35 was drowning in delays and cost overruns. By 2019, the crisis reached a breaking point. F-15Cs were grounded repeatedly for safety inspections. Squadrons sat idle. America's air superiority was eroding in real time. The Air Force needed fighters immediately, not in 10 years, not in five years, now. Then, Boeing made an offer nobody expected. They'd been building advanced F-15s for Saudi Arabia and Qatar, the F-15SA and the F-15QA. These weren't your grandfather's eagles. They were packed with 21st century technology, proven systems, and a production line already running. Boeing could deliver operational fighters in months, not decades. If you believe America made the right call bringing back the F-15, type yes in the comments below. But here's where the story gets interesting. The F-15EX isn't just a refurbished Cold War relic. It's a technological beast that does things no other American fighter can match. Start with the weapons load. The F-35 carries four missiles internally when flying stealthy. Impressive, but limited. The F-15EX? 12 air-to-air -air missiles. In a single sortie, one Eagle II can engage more targets than three F-35s combined. When you're defending against massive Chinese or Russian bomber formations launching cruise missiles, that magazine depth becomes a war-winning advantage. The numbers tell the story. Maximum takeoff weight, 81,000 pounds. Payload capacity, 29,500 pounds. That's more than an F-35, more than an F-18, more than almost 80 fighter flying. The Eagle II can haul bombs, missiles, and fuel pods that would ground lighter jets. It's a flying arsenal. Speed matters too. Mach 2.5, nearly 1,900 miles per hour. The F-15EX matches the original Eagle's blistering performance while carrying twice the weapons. Modern adversaries learned that speed kills. You can't shoot what you can't catch. And in aerial combat, the jet that gets to the fight first often wins. Range seals the deal, approximately 2,762 miles without refueling, extendable with conformal fuel tanks. That's Hawaii to California. That's Japan to the Philippines. That's presence over entire ocean expanses where America's enemies thought they could operate freely. 
the Eagle II can fly farther, stay longer, and hit harder than jets costing twice as much. But the real revolution sits in the cockpit. Digital fly-by-wire controls replace old hydraulic systems. The all-glass cockpit features touchscreens that future pilots raised on smartphones operate instinctively. The open mission systems architecture means upgrades happen through software updates, not billion-dollar retrofit programs. The ANPG-82 AESA radar sees farther and clearer than older systems. It tracks dozens of targets simultaneously while jamming enemy radars. Paired with the EPWSS Electronic Warfare Suite, the Eagle II detects threats, geolocates them, and jams them automatically. It's battlefield awareness that keeps pilots alive in the most dangerous skies. Critics pounced immediately. It's not stealthy. Defense analysts called it obsolete. Op-eds declared it a waste of money. How could a non-stealth fighter survive against Chinese S-400 missiles or Russian Su-57s? The Pentagon's answer surprised everyone. Stealth isn't everything. In fact, stealth comes with crippling limitations. Stealth fighters carry weapons internally to maintain their radar-defeating shape, which means fewer missiles. They're maintenance nightmares requiring special hangars and coatings, and they're phenomenally expensive. The F-35 costs roughly $80 million per jet, with a mission-capable rate around 67%. The F-15EX costs approximately $90 million, but achieves an 83% mission-capable rate. Translation? Eagle Twos spend more time flying and less time broken. When you need fighters in the air defending American territory, availability trumps invisibility. Here's the strategic genius. The F-15EX was never meant to penetrate defended airspace alone. That's what stealthy F-22s and F-35s do. The Eagle II operates as the magazine, the missile truck, the airborne armory that multiplies what fifth-generation fighters can accomplish. Imagine this scenario. F-35s slip past enemy defenses, identify targets, but exhaust their four internal missiles. Meanwhile, F-15EXs orbit safely outside surface-to-air missile range loaded with 12 missiles each. The F-35s transmit targeting data through secure networks. The Eagle IIs launch. Enemies never see the shooter. They just see missiles appearing from nowhere. This isn't theoretical. It's called cooperative engagement, and it's transforming aerial warfare. One stealthy sensor platforms, multiple shooters, overwhelming firepower, the kind of combat that wins wars. November 2025, four F-15EXs roared over the Gulf of America with the Air Force Secretary in the lead jet's rear seat. Not a publicity stunt, a declaration. The Eagle II was operational, proven, and ready. But the real story was happening 7,000 miles away. July 2025, two F-15EXs landed at Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan, the most strategic piece of American real estate in the Pacific. Within striking range of Taiwan, Korea, and the Chinese mainland. The timing wasn't coincidental. China's been building its military at an alarming pace. Aircraft carriers, stealth fighters, hypersonic missiles, the balance of power in the Pacific was shifting, and aging F-15 CDs at Kadena were literally held together with hope and spare parts. The F-15 EX deployment sent an unmistakable message. America's replacing worn-out jets, not with fewer stealth fighters, but with high-capacity missile trucks that can surge sortie rates. In a conflict over Taiwan, where hundreds of aircraft might engage simultaneously, sortie generation wins. The side that gets more jets airborne more often controls the sky. The plan calls for 36 F-15EXs at Kadena by 2030. That's 432 missiles in the air at once if every jet flies fully loaded. Add F-35s and F-22s already stationed in the region, and you're looking at an aerial armada that can blunt any Chinese offensive. Back home, the Eagle II solves another critical problem, homeland defense. Air National Guard units in Oregon, California, Louisiana, and Florida are transitioning from ancient F-15 CDs to brand new Eagle IIs. 
These jets intercept suspicious aircraft, respond to hijackings, and patrol American airspace 24-7. The beauty of the F-15EX for guard units? Minimal training required. Pilots transition from old eagles to new ones in months, not years. Maintenance crews use familiar procedures. Bases need no special infrastructure. You can't say that about stealth fighters requiring climate-controlled hangars and specialized equipment. Pentagon accountants discovered something remarkable. The F-15EX proved cheaper to operate than almost any alternative. How's that possible with a $90 million price tag? First, the production line was already running. Boeing was building advanced Eagles for foreign customers. The Air Force simply piggybacked onto existing contracts, slashing development costs. No billion-dollar research programs, no years of testing, just proven jets rolling off an active assembly line. Second, the logistics are established. The Air Force has operated F-15s for nearly 50 years. They know every bolt, wire, and system. Spare parts fill warehouses. Mechanics train on familiar airframes. There's no learning curve eating budgets and delaying deployments. Third, the mission-capable rate matters enormously. When 83% of your fleet can fly on any given day versus 67%, you need fewer total aircraft. Fewer jets mean lower costs for hangars, personnel, fuel, and everything else that makes aviation expensive. The Air Force initially planned to buy 144 F-15EXs before reducing to 104 and settling around 98 in the fiscal 2025 budget. Even that smaller number plugs the fighter gap while freeing budget space for next-generation programs like the NGAD 6th generation fighter. June 2024 brought the ultimate validation, full rate production approval. The F-15EX had passed every test. It was ready for mass production. Boeing St. Louis facility ramped up, hiring hundreds of workers. The Eagle, once thought retired, was roaring back. The F-15EX represents something bigger than one fighter program. It's a strategic philosophy. Not everything requires stealth. Not every mission needs the most expensive solution. Sometimes overwhelming firepower, reliability, and availability beat cutting-edge technology. The Air Force is building a high-low mix. High-end stealthy F-22s and F-35s for penetrating strikes. Lower-cost F-15EXs for everything else air defense, homeland security, missile truck missions, and sheer presence. Together, they create a force that's affordable, sustainable, and lethal. Critics who screamed about wasting money on a 50-year-old design missed the point entirely. The F-15EX shares a shape with the original Eagle the way a modern smartphone shares a shape with rotary phones. The external resemblance hides revolutionary internal changes. The airframe is strengthened for 20,000 flight hours, more than any fighter in history. The digital backbone allows upgrades impossible on older jets. The weapons capacity enables missions no contemporary fighter can match. And the cost effectiveness lets America field numbers that quality alone couldn't provide. Looking ahead, the Eagle II is testing capabilities that will define future combat. Boeing is exploring its use as a controller for unmanned collaborative combat aircraft Drone swarms directed from the F-15EX's two-seat cockpit. Imagine one crew commanding a dozen autonomous drones while carrying a full missile load themselves. That's not science fiction. That's the 2030s. The deployment schedule tells you everything about Air Force confidence. Oregon achieved initial operational capability in July 2024. California and Louisiana units are transitioning now. Kadena's getting three dozen jets by 2030. If the F-15EX was a mistake, they'd be scaling back, not accelerating. So here's what really happened. America didn't bring back the F-15 out of nostalgia or desperation. The Air Force made a calculated decision that older designs, radically modernized, could solve problems that stealth alone couldn't fix. They needed magazine depth. They needed sortie rates. They needed availability. They needed it now. The F-15EX Eagle II delivers all of that, while costing less and flying more than alternatives. It's the fighter nobody wanted to build, becoming the fighter America can't build fast enough. Sometimes the deadliest weapon isn't the newest one. 
Sometimes it's the proven warrior upgraded for modern combat, carrying enough firepower to change the outcome. The Eagle didn't come back because America was weak. It came back because America was smart. If you found this story as fascinating as we did, hit that like button and subscribe for more defense content that cuts through the noise. The next generation of air combat is being written right now, and we'll be covering every development.